on today's Locked On Senators. Five goal first period. We'll recap last night's 6-2 Sens win over the Buffalo Sabres and look ahead to tonight where the Chicago Blackhawks and Connor Bedard will come to Ottawa. Luckily for Connor Bedard, he won't have to face up against Thomas Shabbat, who's out for tonight's game, but he will have to go up against Tyler Clevin. We'll get into all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 1012 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan, soaking in the South Scottsdale sun alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter. Locked on dot senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello, let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Thursday, March 28th, and Pilsy, five goals. That's absolutely sick. Yeah, it was uh it was a wild way to start a hockey game for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Ross, I found myself laughing during the fierce period, being like, what is the, what is going on here? The Sens not only not allowing the first goal, so they get the first one from the fourth line, and you're like, ooh, okay, nice. Another one from the fourth line. And then it just keeps piling on. By the time the fifth goal came around, I was like, is this, is this real life right now? The Ottawa Senators beating up on a team on the road? Now, obviously, same time zone, so that's to be expected that they're going to be able to handle that. But still, a 5 nothing first period was uh, a real treat for Ottawa Senators fans. Trivia time. When was the last time the Ottawa Senators scored five goals in a first period? And that's kind of important because, I mean, you're setting the tone for the rest of the game. We won't get into the bogged down details, but Ottawa certainly outplayed the final 40 minutes overall. Score effects coming into play. Ottawa does, though, get the empty netter to get the sixth goal, and they win 6-2. But when was the last time the Sens had a five-goal first period, Pillsy? I will tell you that it's the fifth time in franchise history that this has occurred. For some reason, the only thing that's coming out to my mind, and it's probably not correct, um, did they get five in the first period, that home opener up against Boston? No, no, that that's a great guess because it, when it went in doubt, that's the game to pull up. Yeah, because that game was just just unbelievable. Seven five was the final score. No, you have to go all the way back to January of two thousand and four. Oh, that's the last time the Sens wow. had five goals in the first period. Pilsy, Chris Neal let us off. Hell yeah! Followed by Wade Redden, Radic Bonk, Brian yeah. Smolinski. And Jason Spezza. That's how long ago it was. 7 1. The Sens beat the Toronto Maple Leafs back then. Oof. And uh, wow, they just did it again. And it was hard for checking. And Jacques Martin mentioned it. A lot of those goals, you think of the Jacob Chickering one, the one that made it 4 0 in particular. Great work down low by Batherson, then Kachuk, and then Pinto comes in. Everybody on that forward group touched the puck below the goal line on that one. And then what a backhand feed Pinto over to Chikrin. He makes no mistake. Chikrin had a great game. He's actually looked pretty good a few games in a row now. So hopefully this is a new leaf for him. And he's Other able than to- Ross, he did have one wild delay of game penalty where he just backhand sauced it like a million miles away. And Brady Chuck was trying to, he tried his best to knock it down and keep it in. And then after he smashes his stick and he's like, Chick, what 
What was that? <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, I'm just trying to get parts of his game going at a time. So let's focus on the offense. Then we'll focus Fair. on the decision making in the <laughs> defensive end. But just overall, like they played a sustainable style. I know if you're you're watching the Sabres post game press conference, you're kind of well, you're smiling, but you're looking at it from their standpoint where it's like, look, we let them have too much open space. We hung our goalie out to dry. Yada yada yada. I would say no. I think the Ottawa Senators stuck to their game plan, which they've admittedly not done enough this season, where they're going to get pucks in deep. They're going to make sure that they have a supporting player to come in and help dig it out and then create offense through that. So I thought it was a pretty pretty solid style of play uh, for them to be able to rattle off the four goals in eight minutes and 49 seconds. The third fastest four goals to begin a game in Senators history. Those stats courtesy of Sportsnet Stats. Yeah, Ross, uh, Sabres, players, fans, you got sensed, all right? You got sensed, deal with it. Don't don't try to spin this around like you didn't play good enough. No, you just got dominated by the Ottawa Senators. And what I like about those first two goals, Ross, simple hockey, not messing around. The fourth line, just getting it like uh, the first goal, Boris Kachuk just turns, rips it on net, Ends up uh, with Zub knocking it in through uh, UPL's legs, and then the that, that second... was the that was the Ryan Smith special, eh? Pucks at the goal line. Oh, let me make sure it's in. Nothing wrong with that, Zub. Just making sure it goes in. Uh, and then the second goal, Kelly just turns and rips it on net, and Kachuk's in front. Like the common theme for those goals: fourth line for checking, not messing around. Just get the puck on net, but have a body in front. Cassie was in front. Kachuk was in front, and they're able to uh, create goals from that. So that's what you want to see more of from the Ottawa Senators, especially that fourth line. The Ottawa Senators got contributions from everybody, it felt like, and multi-point games from a lot of guys. Brady Kachuk, Mark Kastelik, and Boris Kachuk, and Drake Batherson, and Jacob Chitron. Well, all of them had, I was going with the two point guys as well. Yeah. I was building suspense, Bilzy, because Sorry. Shane Pinto in 15 minutes and 30 seconds went 73% in the dot plus four, a goal and three assists. What a night for Shane Pinto. And he doesn't even get the fire helmet, Ross, uh, but good guy, Drake Batson. I should have, this one, this one flew past me on my fire helmet, emotional uh, radar. And I, I would fully admit I missed this one completely. But Drake Batson hands it off to Boris Kachuk, his first goal as an Ottawa Senator. A, a where were you, as well. A where were you moment, Ross? Where were you when Boris Kachuk got his first goal as an Ottawa Senator? I don't want to talk about Boris because no spoilers, but we've got a full game day preview, and it is a Boris Kachuk revenge game tonight. Okay. You get placed on waivers. Oh, you're circling the next time you play that team. And that's Boris Kachuk tonight. But before we move off of last night's game, look, it's now three wins in a row for the Ottawa Senators. And in certain aspects, they were playing spoiler again because the Sabres, as delusional as it may be, they said after the game, they felt like they were playing for their playoff lives. New Jersey felt the same. So that's two games where the opponent is playing for their lives. They're playing as hard as possible. And uh, the Ottawa Senators came in and put another smackdown on them. Another topic we'll get into a little bit later in this show is Eunice Corpusalo, another plus 900 save percentage night for him and another win for him. It is numbers like the save percentage isn't spectacular yet, but Corpusalo is finding ways to win hockey games recently for better or worse. I know there's some fans that are like, oh, now he's winning games. How convenient. Well, in his last six games, Eunice Corpusalo is five and one. And that one loss, Ross, was he let in six goals up against the Bruins. In his last three games, all three wins, obviously 3-0, uh, a 9-2-4 save percentage. Ooh. So this is the this is the frustrating thing with Eunice Corpusal, Ross. He's got a bit of Matt Murray in him in this sense. Like, if you're looking through his game logs, there's a couple times where he'll pull together three wins and have pristine numbers, like... Uh, like uh, mid to high 900 save percentage, but then there's like eight games in a row where it's just god awful in the low 800s. So he's, he's going to have to find some middle ground, and we'll we can get into this more when we get into this Chicago Blackhawks. But like 
look at a guy like Peter Mrazek, a guy that the Leafs dumped off. I'm pretty sure they had to add uh, draft picks to have Chicago take that contract. And he's playing on arguably the worst team in the league. Maybe San Jose Sharks have something to say about that. But he has a 307 and a 906 save percentage. If the Ottawa Senators got Peter Mrazek numbers, this team would be in a drastically different spot than they are here. So it's just crazy that Corpus Allo's lows are so low and so heavy and his highs seem to be so high but so fleeting and you only get two or three games where they pan out that way now he was spotted a five nothing uh lead in the first period but still battle back made some good saves as you mentioned he made some as, great saves especially in the second period where ottawa allowed 17 shots now they had 15 of their own but still 17 against uh corpus Allo made a bunch of his saves uh in the second half of this game and look it it might be another full run where the Sens finish the year 10 2 and 2, and you're like, okay, but I remain committed to letting the citizens know that for them to, to draft any lower than seventh overall would be shocking. The Senators are five points back of their nearest opponent, despite winning three games in a row. So I don't think we have to worry about that just yet. Just enjoy the way they're playing. Yeah. Enjoy a three game win streak that will turn to six if they win tonight because Pilsy and I are boots on the ground yes. for the next two games at Winnipeg Saturday and in Minnesota on Tuesday. The Senators, though, are 0 13 and 1 west of the Eastern time zone. So it's going to be boom. Unstoppable force, a movable object. This. But we got this. And we got a Nodak Sen who could be coming on the trip. Winnipeg's the closest spot to home for Tyler Clevin, and he's going to be up and in the lineup because Thomas Shabbat left last night's game, did not return. Head coach Jacques Martin saying this morning that it's been a nagging issue for Thomas Shabbat. Stop me if you've heard me say that in the past. We'll get into all those conversations and more. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Mary J's. Mary J's is the locally owned cannabis dispensary in the Ottawa area. Started off with Dashi and two of his buddies making a life-changing decision. And through hard work and dedication, they now have four stores in the Ottawa area. You can check out their locations in Ottawa in Riverside South, Orleans, Greeley, and Russell. Mary J's offers the best and newest products in the market. They're adding new stuff to the menu every single week to keep it fresh for you guys. Mary J's has everything you need, whether you're a rookie looking to try some new stuff out or you're a grizzled vet and you want to get in and out of there quickly, they got you. Mary J's offers competitive pricing. In fact, they're going to price match any store in Ottawa. That means you're guaranteed to get the best price around at a Mary J's location. Mary J's offers the best customer service by having the friendliest bud tenders who are always ready to help you out. Dashy, one of the owners, is usually at one of the four locations. He's a what diehard Sense fan. So go to one of those stores and say what up to Dashy. Pick his brain about the Ottawa Senators' latest three-game win streak and ask him all about the new products that Mary J's has to offer. Check it out today, guys. Mary J's Dispensary. Today's episode is also brought to you by our very good friends with FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets. FanDuel is here to help over the college basketball Final Four season. And what you can do at FanDuel is everything. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Who's cutting down the net at the end of March Madness. Of course, you can bet on NHL as well. If you're a big Sens money line guy like myself, responsibly, I always like to parlay that with a shots on goal. They've got same game parlays, all that at FanDuel. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And you can get that $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on. You can also bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. All 
right, Pillsy. It's game day for the Ottawa Senators. Rolling Woo. back home with three straight wins. The lowly Chicago Blackhawks coming to town. But we're going to have, I'm assuming, standing room only at the Canadian Tire Center because Connor Bedard is coming to Ottawa for the first time in his career. Connor Bedard fills ranks, and he's 18 years old. That's the type of talent that Chicago has in him. Yep. Outside of him, not a whole lot of talent on this roster. Look, they brought in Taylor Hall to be his wingman, the number one pick whisperer that yes. he's been able to do with Nico Heischer, with Jack Hughes, with Ryan Nugent Hopkins, with eh, Neil Yakupov. I don't know if we count that one as much, but this guy has been around top picks. However, he was injured early on this season. We know the Corey Perry drama allowed him to leave town so he's pretty much on an island with nick felino hashtag yeah. sends abroad traded for mert Mathod, of course yep. however this is a team that's hoping to get mackling celebrini they're hoping for another top pick but somehow some way pills in you can speak to this better than anybody they find ways to beat the ottawa senators always this team drives me nuts the chicago blackhawks i mean everyone knows about my experience in chicago I'm there for a layover. They lose five nothing last season. Uh, I couldn't couldn't believe that. That was terrible. Then, of course, Chris Neal Knight, Ross and I are in the building. Our only loss together at a Sens game. That OT, in overtime. OT, OT. Yep, but still, that's a one blemish on our record there. And then this year, the Ottawa Senators can't beat them again uh, following I believe it was 3-2 in regulation. So the Chicago Blackhawks, they just have the Sens numbers. It's one of those things where you just you have know, to accept that. Do you know how many straight wins Chicago has over Ottawa? I think it was like 17 or something, right? No, no. It's a little bit less than that, but um, it's, it's 11. It's 11 straight wins. Wait, is it since 2017? For some reason, 17 is the number I have in my head. The Senators' last win against Chicago was that season, but it was December 21st, 2016. Okay, okay, gotcha. Where Ottawa was able to get a 4-3 win over Chicago. A where-were-you-when moment. Yes. They just dominate the Ottawa Senators, and hopefully tonight it changes. Uh, the game earlier this year was so frustrating because that was after their their little fake push, right, where they had, yep. they'd beaten some good teams and they were, they were feeling good about their game. And then they go into Chicago, and they'd already lost to Anaheim the game yep. before. So you're like, come on. But they had won four in a row before that. Their record over an extended period of time, let me go all the way back and remind you that the Senators were 8-2-2 two and two over a 12-game span. From January 13th to February 13th, they lose to Anaheim 5-1. Okay, we outshot them 34-20. to We're feeling good still. You, you know what? You're going to get a trash bag performance every once in a while. But then to go into Chicago, outshoot them 42-22, to and give up the game-winning goal with two minutes left. I mean, I was going to say you can't write the script any better than that. Maybe any worse would be more appropriate. Yeah, but oh. it's a revenge game tonight for the Ottawa Senators against the Chicago Blackhawks. But you were saying this is one where maybe you, you wouldn't mind the streak living on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm so back and forth on how I'm approaching this tank. Uh, if if I'm doing another solo cast, I definitely want the win. It's so much better to do solo <laughs> post cast talking about a win. However... I don't, I don't want the Ottawa Senators to get too ahead of themselves here with this inevitable hot streak they're going to get on in the end of March as they do. So it's not the worst thing if they lose. But then part of me is like, ah, oh, man, you don't want to lose at home. That's, that's never a good thing. So I guess, Ross, what I'm saying is no matter the result of this game, I will spin zone this to be a positive. Can't lose the rest of the season. Hmm. You either win for the vibes or you lose for the pick. Yeah, yeah. We're in a great spot. So the Senators did not skate this morning. Of course, it's their second of back-to-back -back games. So we're going to look at the lines from yesterday with the one exception that Thomas Shabbat will be out of the lineup. So we just put an asterisk. We replaced him with Tyler Clevin on the second pair. This is, to me, a big, not indictment of Travis Hamanick, but basically they saw him back from injury and said, okay, like, you're done. You're done for the year reevaluate afterwards, but 
Travis Hamnick will not be playing the rest of the year. I, I, I just can't I so. can't see it. Yeah, and, can't and see it. the thing too, Ross, is you might as well try to see what you got in Brainy and JBD because I I feel like management is going to have to decide between those two guys who's staying and who's going, right? Because this decor hasn't been up to snuff, and I don't think you need both of those guys, especially if Clevin is going to emerge into an NHL spot next season. Now, the one thing I'm curious about, we know how much Travis Hamnick loves his hometown, Winnipeg. Do they give him that as one last game of the season where it's like, play in your hometown, you're going to play 12 minutes anyways, and away you go. Kind of ride off into the sun. Hey, we'll give you that Winnipeg game, but instead of us buying you out this summer, can you just retire? <laughs> yeah, man. Maybe they maybe they do that. Although I feel like this this management has no kind of uh, attachment to really many of these guys, especially. Well, Hamannick would be the one guy. Steve Stales played with Hamannick. Yeah, fair. And he's a player. He's always talking about you know making sure the players are respected and whatnot. So I'm curious. Hey, if if Hamannick plays on Saturday, maybe that's why. Uh, yeah. Up front, I mean, we don't really have to roll through the line. Same as same as last game. Um, who's your locked on player to watch? Well, my locked on player to watch is going to be number forty three, Tyler Clevin Ross. Um, it's nice that Sens fans get to see him back in the NHL here. Um, in forty five games with Belleville, he's got three goals, fourteen assists. He's actually had a decent season down there. He's plus 13, and he's been able to have consistent play, and he's been relied upon by David uh, uh, by David Bell, head coach down there. So I want to see what Clevin's got. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen him up in the NHL. I like that for Tyler Clevin, and not only that, I mean, he's the unanimous number one prospect for the Ottawa Senators. Yep. And, like, I know we have him at the second pair right here. He's going to play a third pair of minutes, I would imagine. Chikrin moving up into yep. that second pair role. So with that, it's like, look, Ottawa keeps talking, and Mark Mathod always lets us know that the Senators' decor, they need to have more guys who put out fires, more guys in their own zone, pushing guys out of the way, making things an issue. Can Tyler Clevin be ready now? Because they need help now, starting next year, to be a guy that you can rely on to be physically imposing enough at this age. If he's not ready, it's not the end of the world. I'm not giving up yeah. on him as a prospect. He's in his first year pro, but the Senators might want to look at bringing in a more veteran bottom pair defenseman in the offseason if they don't feel like Tyler Clevin is ready. And this is going to be a great opportunity, whether it's for just a handful of games or the rest of the season, to see what they've got in him as an NHL defenseman. Yeah, I'm going to go. Wait, Ross, but, sorry, sorry, just quickly, especially Ross, if he ends up playing with um, Branny, like we have lined up here, like probably what's going to happen is Chickren and JBD will be the second uh, pair and then Clevin and Branny will be the third. If Clevin's going to be playing with Branny, I really want to see him impose his will physically, right? Like he's got to dominate. He's got to be the the shut down, defensively responsible guy on that pair. So that'll be interesting to see if he's able to do that. Love it. I'm going to go with Boris Kachuk as my locked on player. Look, nice. he's played 10 games for the Ottawa Senators, been invisible in a few of them. He's averaging just a, a hair under nine minutes per game. But overall, to see a progression from him and the way he was getting to the net last night. I want to see if that continues. And I always love the story of a guy going on waivers and then coming back to play his former team and looking to get a big performance out of him as a second one, though, Tim Stutzla at 18 goals. I mean, I'm going to will this guy to 20. I need this guy to get 20 goals so badly. Uh, 25 would be even better, but I think let's, let's uh, baby steps first uh, for, for Tim Stutzla. So uh, those are my two locked on players to watch on the other side we will get into the chicago blackhawks and also thomas shabbat he's been playing with a nagging injury what's with this thomas shabbat always playing with some sort of injury can we not just let him heal to 100 percent first i'll ask pilsy about that next you're listening to locked on senators your team every day Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and even level it up to peak performance. They got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. 
So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll always have exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. It's that simple. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not burning cash. With all the parts you need, but at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Check it out today, guys. eBay Motors. All right, Philzy. Game day for the Ottawa Senators at home. A 7 o'clock start against the Chicago Blackhawks. Connor Bedard's coming to town. And if you want to make sure that you've got a smooth ride to and from the game, make sure you check out our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. Just $17 round trip to and from the CTC. $17. The bus leaves an hour and 15 minutes from game time at 779 Bank Street. They'll bring you right back after the game. One note we didn't mention with the lineup when we pulled it up, it will be an Anton Forsberg start tonight, Pilsy. Your thoughts on not going back to Corpus Allo in a back-to-back scenario when they did just that earlier last weekend? I think it's the right move, Ross. Uh, you don't want to wear Corpy out and, you know, let, let him take a break while he's hot. You know, you don't want to ride him out and then he has a disastrous game and then he's kind of in his own head again. I think keep that confidence high and at the same time, Look, I know Forsberg hasn't been great lately, but you gotta you gotta get him back in the mix here. So a back to back where your opponent is Chicago, you're hoping that's a nice landing spot for him, and he can try to get some confidence back to ride out the rest of the season. Revenge game for Corpus Al- or uh, Forsberg. Forsberg as well uh, started sure. his career a little bit with Chicago, but uh, I'm within. I think you're already penned in to have Corpus Allo start Saturday in Winnipeg. So I think that this is a good kind of spot on the schedule to get Forsberg back in action, and hopefully he's feeling ready and up to the task. He's going to have to do it without Thomas Shabbat in the lineup. Left last night's game and did not return. Pilsy, what do you make of this uh, nagging injury? I know, look, at this point in the season, a lot of guys are playing through injuries, but Thomas Shabbat, he'd been playing so well, and he came back from an extended period off. It just feels like... This guy's he just he's having trouble staying hundred percent. Yeah, and it's it's tough because it seems like every year at the end of the season, Thomas Shabbat uh, has something that takes him out of the lineup here, and he's a big part of this decor. I don't know, Ross. I, I'm not I'm not sure why this continuously happens uh, late in the season like this, but I think at this point depending on what it is, I don't know what it is. And even if I did know what it, what it was, Brandon Pillar, not a doctor, so I would not be able to properly diagnose it. However, I almost feel like Ross at this point, just, just shut him down for the rest of the season. Yeah. And just see what you have with Tyler Clevin. Cause look like yeah. since he came back, new year's Eve was like his last major injury. He missed the entire month of December after getting injured in that Seattle game at the start of the month, like 35 games. 24 points like that's that's a great pace for thomas shabbat yeah he's looked good and especially he's kind of uh you know he's been able to balance out jacob chikrin not playing as well and then jake sanderson is just so consistent so he stays there so thomas shabbat's been able to kind of have that positive bump where chikrin's kind of drag drag the decor down so it's they're gonna miss him back there yeah sure well hey good time for chikrin to be playing the best hockey we've seen from him since the opening month of the season so it'll be a great offensively opportunity exactly and hopefully can round out a little bit defensively for him but just just brutal news for Thomas Shabbat who I think had been playing some of his best hockey of his career and it's unfortunate that uh I'm not sure if his season's over but that he's going to be missing a a bit of time here um uh, you get a look at Tyler Clevin though and I think you wanted that at some point right yeah, and that's the thing. Like, there's no there's no need to have Tom Shabbat playing through nagging injuries right now. And if you're Sens management, this is the perfect time of year to get a good look at guys and see where they're at in their development, especially a guy like Tyler Clevin, who we feel like is going to be a big part of this defense core moving forward. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the Chicago Blackhawks lines for tonight. We're going to be seeing Chicago in Ottawa tonight. Pilsy, let's look at uh, up front. I mean, Connor Bedard is is the obvious candidate to be a, a lookout player of the game. He he's still rocking the bubble after a broken jaw got him. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, knocked out of the lineup from Brendan Smith for an extended period of time. Um, what are you expecting to see before we look at the lines from Connor Bedard in tonight's game? Excellence. Uh, what's the word you use for Timmy? Dynamis, dynamism? 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 D yeah. <laughs> uh, dynamic word. play. How about we word. I'll put it that way? Word of the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, it's he's incredible. He's a generational talent. You're probably going to see him dazzle with the puck at some point with a, with a great goal here. So, I mean, he looked really good when the Sens played in in Chicago. He Connor Bedard had a nice game there. So I'm expecting big things. He's pretty much the only player worth <laughs> worth mentioning on this Blackhawks team, unfortunately. Well, you already did with, with Peter Mrazek as well, right? Mrazek, former yeah. Ottawa 67. But He's Ross, we know a nice year. If I was about to say Mrazek is my lookout player, immediately Chicago would announce that Soderblom is the starting goaltender. I've, I'm not getting burned by that again. That happens so, every time I highlight a goalie. Soderblom might be the worst goalie in the National Hockey League. I know Sens fans he looked like, oh, pretty man. good last time. Soderblom? No, Isn't it was Mrazek. No, Mrazek was kicking him out, dude. Okay, I thought they got Soderblom last time. Never mind. Soderblom has four wins in 27 games this year. <laughs> yeah. Soderblom has a below 900 save percentage in 17 of his 27 games. Well, we he is a, he, he's struggled. Even in his career, you look at his career stats, he's 632 and three. Those are Marcus Hogberg numbers. Pilsen. Hey, whoa, ricochet shot at my guy Hogberg there. But hey, that's a good goalie to have when you're tanking, Ross. Yeah, it certainly is. So the top line, you've got Connor Bedard at center in between Ryan Donato and Philip Kurashev. Tyler Johnson at center between Nick Foligno and uh, Taylor Radish, not Darren, who plays for Tampa Bay. Third line center is Andreas Athanasiu with Mackenzie Entwistle and Lucas Reichel. And then Jason Dickinson is between Slaggart and Joey Anderson on the fourth line. On defense, Alex Vlasic with Seth Jones, Kevin Korchinski with Jacob Megna, and then Wyatt Kaiser is with Nikita Zaitsev. We expect Peter Mrazic to start in goal. Pilsy, a lookout player from you. Uh, you know what? I'll take I'll take Nick Foligno here, number 17, as he's having a, a decent season as far as being a veteran guy on a trash rebuilding team in 65 games, 16 goals, 19 assists. And I just I love the um, the relationship between Nick Foligno and Connor Bedard. We've already had some seen some hilarious moments where on the bench Bedard's talking to him and he's like, Yeah, like you you just weren't you weren't in the spot I wanted you to be. And Felino's like, You calling me slow? Bernard's like, well, yeah, like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> or Nick Foligno being like, oh, kid, I got so much to teach you. Like, they're going to have to sign me for five more years if I'm going to be able to teach you all you need to learn about playing in the NHL. So just fun little moments like that is uh, cool from uh, a Sens Abroad legend in Nick Foligno. Absolutely. And Pilsy, I'm going to give you a stat here that I just, um, the stats department slash me Hit just me. looked up. Connor Bedard already has two or more points against half of the league. 16 wow. teams. He had two points against Ottawa in the one game, goal and an assist. Obvious. He was injured for part of the year, and he yeah. already has two or more points against 16 of the 31, because he obviously can't score on himself, teams that he's played so far. Uh, that's was, that's you, ridiculous. You just saved it there, Ross. I was about to be the first co comment being like, what about against the Blackhawks? So, good save there. Uh, he has six points against both Arizona and Anaheim each. <laughs> Amazing. This, kid, this kid's a stud. He's going to be yeah, yeah. a superstar in the no league for a long it. time. Uh, 58 games so far, 56 points. Minus 37. Chili. But you look at what he can do is change the course of the game in just the snap of a finger. And Luke Richardson, Ottawa guy, head coach in Chicago, doing a really good job at insulating him. He starts in the offensive zone 61.4% of the time. That's got to be up the upper echelon 
of offensive zone starts in the National Hockey League. But he's the kind of guy I'm sure lots of people in Ottawa are listening to this, getting fired up, going to the game tonight because yeah. Connor Bedard is coming to Ottawa. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? It's a game day. Pilsy, you crushed the postcast solo last night. I Thank feel you. bad doing it, but I listen in the morning. I get fired up. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited for another game day. Hey, we'll have boots on the ground postcast on Saturday. Yep, I'm I'm fired up for our our, our little road trip there to Winnipeg and Minnesota. Um, final thoughts for me is, yeah, no matter what happens with this game, I'm not going to let the curse of the Chicago Blackhawks get me down. I will find a way to spin zone this into a positive, no matter what. So don't worry about it. I hope it's not a bad sign that uh, somebody just fired up the lawnmower right behind me as the, as the pod winds down. But we'll be back with the postcast tonight and another weekend preview tomorrow morning. This is your team every day. Please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a five-star review on your favorite Apple pod or your favorite podcast platform, whether it's Apple or Spotify or wherever you catch the podcast. It really does help us out and we will be grinding our way to the end of the season and then putting on our draft hats and following along with the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs excited to see tyler clevin in action tonight could you imagine if our first k train hit is against connor bedard there's a little fan fiction for great. you to carry throughout the day for brandon pillar i'm ross levitan thanks so much for listening we'll chat in the postcast this has been another edition of the locked on senators podcast your team every day <laughs>